Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, it's Ricky, and today I thought I'd just sit down and tell you guys a little story time, because it's been a minute, uh, but before I get into the story time, I'm going to tell you guys today just did not go as planned. Basically, I have all the lights on in my room right now because it's raining outside, and I was planning on sh making a video today because I thought it was going to be sunny, and I like count on the lighting from the outside because I like shoot right in front of my, um, my window. So that didn't turn out great, and then I don't have a tripod, so literally my camera is sitting on a whole bunch of um, uh, like uh, DVD cases right now, and then the camera is chilling on a candle holder, but it's working, it's good. I mean, I'm not complaining. So uh, basically, I, while while I was trying to set up that whole thing, I broke a mirror, and. Uh, now I'm gonna get seven years of bad luck. Let's cross our fingers that I don't. <laughs> so, yeah, but let's just get right into the story. Today I'm gonna tell you guys about the time that this crazy old lady thought that I was dead. So I'm gonna take you guys back to freshman year. Um, I, at the school I was going to, you had to do community service to graduate. It wasn't like I had gotten in trouble and I had to do community service. Um, so I needed 200 hours of community service by um, by my senior year but I ended up transferring school so really that didn't even matter but anyways the community service had a couple different places but one of the places that I really liked was um, I, I used to do community service at this nursing home in the city that I lived in and um, there's three different parts to it there's the main part and this is just where like the, I don't want to say normal because I mean, what's normal? Um, it's just like the, the residents that could like talk and function and you know like do their normal stuff. Like some of them could walk around and some of them were in a wheelchair but they were just like, they were just like the, I don't know the the residents that didn't give you problems that that was them and they were in the main part when you first walk in and so across the not across the street but across the parking lot it was it was still the same complex it was just like in a different building um that was called the villa and, uh, the villa is where uh first of all you need a code to get in there and to get out so it's kind of like a jail, like they can't really leave or, um, they can't really leave unless, um, somebody takes them out or somebody from their family comes to pick them up and take them out to lunch or something because, um, they, they did that a lot where, like, their family members would come and take them out to lunch or take them somewhere and just so they're not all cooped up in that, uh, nursing home all the time, you know? The residents in the villa were, were more problematic, but they weren't crazy. Like, they were just the more stubborn ones and the ones with attitude. And where there was this re one resident, and her name was Pat, and she couldn't stand up for a long time or she would faint. So she had to sit down all the time, but she could walk around. It's just like, you know, she couldn't, she couldn't be walking around all the time. And so she would get irritated when she wasn't winning on bingo and she would stand up and walk away and we're like no 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 pat you gotta you gotta come sit down and she's like no i will not like you know crossing her arms and giving us attitude and i'm like oh my gosh this old lady's over here giving me attitude i'm talking back and <laughs> it was just it was funny like uh, but they were cool. I remember there was this one guy in the villa, I think his name was George or Johnson, something something like that, and he was always hitting on me because I, we would, there was like a certain time for dinner and I would serve them their dinner and their, um, their drinks and everything and there's this one guy and he was always hitting on me and he's like, do you have a boyfriend and can you bend over and this and that and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, what? <laughs> So it was just like, it was a trip, it was funny. So I liked going over there, um, and I liked being in the main part, and then there was this other part, and it was called the gardens, and it was in the main building still, but it was like behind this locked door, 
and you needed a key to get in and out. It wasn't like you could just do code. It was like you needed an actual key. And um, that was the only way to get in and out of there because otherwise there was no way to get out. And so since I was just a volunteer, I didn't have a key. I had to get one of the people that work there to let me in and out. And uh, when you first start volunteering, you're not allowed to go in there because these residents that are in the gardens aren't just problematic they're like I don't want to I don't want to say they're crazy but something's not all right in their head you know what I'm saying like they um there's a reason why you need a key to get in and out and that's where I'm going with the story this um this is where the whole story um took place is in the gardens because I had never been in there before but I had volunteered there for a long time and so you know I got more comfortable with the area and the residents and so uh they were like D you can go in the gardens because it's lunchtime and um you know we need a server and so I'm like okay so I'm thinking I'm gonna go in there and there's either gonna be another volunteer helping me or there's gonna be like um you know, one of the people that work there helped me. So somebody lets me in. I go in and I'm like walking around this place trying to find the, um, the dining room and I find it and all the residents are just sitting down, right? They're just sitting down waiting for their food to come out and they're just staring at me. And I'm like, I said, hi. And I was like, hi, I am a volunteer. I'm looking for, um, oh, what were they called? I think it was an RA or an RNA, some, something. Uh, Devin's calling me, guys. It's my boyfriend. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, they were just all looking at me, and they weren't saying anything, and that's not normal because, like, I don't know, whenever I would go into, like, the villa or the, um, the main part, you know, they would always talk to me and everything, and these, like, they were just, like, staring at me with, like, a creepy stare, and I'm just like, okay. Um, so I walk in, and I'm looking around, and there's this one lady, this old lady, and she has a, a lanyard on that has the name of the, the nursing home on it. So I'm thinking, okay, she's one of the RNAs, or whatever it's called. And so she stands up and she like signals me to go over there. So I go over there and I tell her who I am and tell her why I'm there. And she she starts saying like some weird stuff about her son. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and I was like, no, no, no. I'm here to I'm here to volunteer. I, is you, is your son one of the volunteers? And she was saying uh, that she she saw him with me and that he was he was like out there and so when she said he was out there I'm thinking or no she said he's up there with you and I'm like up there in the front like in the lobby do you want me to go get your son and she's like no he's up there with you and I'm, I'm like standing here right like trying to think what and then she grabs my hand and she's like, and then she points and she's like, he's up there in heaven with you. You guys. My heart started racing. What if some random old lady just said that to you? Like, and, like she grabbed my hand and she was literally like pointing up, like saying, he's up there with you. And, and I'm like... I wasn't understanding it at first until, like, you know, she told me, like, he's in heaven and everything, and she was saying that she saw him with me, and that he's with me, and, and everything, and I'm just like, oh, okay, <laughs> and I'm, like, starting to, you know, like, my, my voice is starting to quiver, because I'm, like, about to cry, like, I don't know, that just really scared me. Just the way she said it and the look she had and like she had this weird creepy smile after she said it too. And I was just like, I need to get out of here. So I started backing up, right? And she she can walk. It wasn't like most of the other people there that were like in, in wheelchairs and like they couldn't walk. Like she could walk. So I'm like, oh my God, 
you know, she's gonna come after me. And I'm thinking, like, am I dead? <laughs> you know? Like, uh, so many things were going through my my head and I was like oh my god I need I need to go to the bathroom or something I need to like chill out so the right here the bathroom is right here so I go into the bathroom I lock the door and I'm just like oh my god I'm like looking in the mirror I'm wetting my face with water I'm like did that really just happen like am I alive right now or I'm so scared like I have anxiety so things like that are gonna trip me out especially when I'm all alone with all these people and, like that are, I don't want to say crazy, because I feel like I'm, I'm going to get a whole bunch of hate for that, but I mean, like, they were literally, like, they weren't all there, and so, um, I was like, I can't stay in here forever, you know, I gotta go back out, I gotta get out of here ASAP. I go out, and, um, I try to go out outside the door, and there's no handle on the door, like, it, there's no code or anything. There's no handle. It's like the key that you need is a card, like a card that you swipe. So I'm like, oh my god, this door doesn't have a handle. Like, how am I gonna get out? And so I go searching around this whole place for RNA, right, to take me out. And I'm like, oh my god, I couldn't find one. And it was just so creepy. Then this old lady was walking around like like clo like she had her hand on the wall like uh, oh what was that one movie i think it was called lights out or something and like in the trailer it's like that creepy girl with her hair over her head and she's like touching the wall like that like well that's how this lady was but she had this creepy looking doll in her hand and she was like rocking it like a baby and singing to it and like singing lullabies and stuff and and um so, and then she looked at me, and, oh my god, oh my god, it was just like, it was the creepiest thing ever. I think I asked her if she knew where RNA was so I could get out, and she's like, do you want to hold my baby? And I'm like, no, that's okay, can you show me where an RNA is? She started getting, like, touchy, and she started, like, touching me, touching my arm, and... I don't really remember exactly what she was saying because like I said this was freshman year so it's like three years ago but um, she was really creepy and she was like following me around the whole place while I'm looking for RNA and I started like walking really fast because I don't want to start running and just like cause a scene so like, I don't know I, I had a mini panic attack in the bathroom like before I had came out and I started trying to get out eventually I did find a, a nurse and they they let me out and I called my mom right away and I hadn't even been there for like two hours and normally I stayed for like four hours or longer I called my mom right away and I told her that I was freaking out and I told her what happened and um, she came and picked me up yeah that wasn't the last time I had went there and honestly um, I had gone back and I had been in the gardens before after that but it was just like that was my very first time you know what I'm saying so like I was not used to that that's like uh, the more you let go in there and you you be around like those type of people it's like you get used to it and um, you start to get familiar with certain people and you just like get to know like I don't know, like what to do and what not to do. Like with that that one girl with the the little like doll. <laughs> I know not to take her doll away because she will freak out. A, a nurse took it away so they could do something to her. I think so like they could take her to the bathroom or they could like take her sweater off. I don't know what they did, but they took it away and she started screaming and freaking out and so there was that. And, like certain people had different things and certain people couldn't sit next to each other. It was just like, it was, it was just this whole thing. But honestly, like, it was a cool experience. It will, that experience that I had with that lady freaked me out. But like, um, just experience the whole, like, different parts, um, like the, the gardens, the villa, and the main part, and like seeing how everything was different and seeing like how... I don't know, I just, I guess how old people are when they get old, <laughs> and, um, I don't know, I, I honestly, I, I really liked, um, working there, well, I know I didn't work there, but, um, 
I, I did community service there a lot, like a lot actually, and they they started letting me do like actual office stuff, like filing papers and everything, and I'm like, well maybe after my community service is over they'll hire me, but I ended up switching schools and moving and this whole thing, so that didn't happen, but it, it was a cool experience for the most part. I just wanted to tell you guys that story because it freaked me out and that was like one of the scariest moments in my life and I know it might not seem like that big of a deal because it's just some old lady telling me some crazy stuff, you know, like that happens all the time, but <sighs> got my anxiety levels up. <laughs> well, thank you guys for watching this video. I'll see you guys in my next video. I love you guys and have a good day.